Yo, what up? Welcome back to another season of Gritty Nights, season two. Uh, week one, NFL football. I'm your boy with J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. And uh, my family's good. I hope your family's doing good. I'm so happy football's back. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year for adult men that are into football, that is. Not everybody loves football, but I do. And if you're watching this, you probably do, too. So... First and ten, the first like ten minutes or so, or five minutes, however long it takes, I'm gonna talk about the birds, and then I'm just gonna go through the rest of the league and uh, week one games that we had. Uh, it's just so good to have football back. I didn't get to watch all of them, obviously, but looking over it, just because you want to consume as much football as possible in the beginning, it's great. The birds <laughs> versus the lions, uh, kneecapping training camp versus VR virtual headset training camp. Which one wins? The league now is moved into a place where preseason is taken very less seriously. It's not as many starters. Some teams still do start. You know, the Ravens are still undefeated for the last, like, four years or whatever, for whatever that means. But um, a lot of guys just trying to get through without injury, and it's just a different style. You're still seeing the old school style versus new school, but everybody seems to be moving forward with this whole light, soft stuff which at the end of the day just means that the first three games of your regular season are now going to look like preseason games. I was really upset with the penalties and things like that, but the Lions also have penalties. So either way you look at it, again, the first three games are going to be rough, going to be a little suspect. But at the end of the day, the Eagles won the game. And, of course, that means complaints come. Because even when you win, you can't just win. And I understand some of it, but – People are like, oh, Jalen Hurst needs to throw the ball. A.J. A. Brown is as advertised. Oh, my God, A.J. Brown is as advertised. I don't I don't know if we got to sing a, make a T.O. song for him, A.J., A.J. I don't know what we got to do, but that dude is as advertised. He is a beast, um, and that right, right off the bat just has me excited about the rest of the season and what's to come. Now, with him having his uh, tied his all-time high, on his first game as an Eagle meant that a lot of the rest of the birds did not get catches. But at the same time, people were like, Oh, Jalen needs to throw the ball. It's the same thing. He's just running. I'm like, did you not see the all out blitzes? Did you not see the unblocked men coming up the middle right in his face? If we didn't have a quarterback that had wheels, he would look like Joe Burrow getting sacked seven times standing back there. Like he, he, he would have just got destroyed. But since he has wheels, he moved, he made plays, and we progressed. Now, again, going forward, yes, we need him to throw the ball more. We need to be more accurate. But he threw a nice dime to A.J. Brown. Um, I know people are worried about the uh, Devontae Smith not getting the ball. He's a good kid. He's a good player. He's going to have a bounce back game. He did drop a pass right in his chest that was given to him, and there was a hot read route where he didn't turn around and the ball hit him dead in the back which would have been dead in the chest if he turned around so and it seemed like that was a route where he should have turned around now that's only two targets but at the same time you know how it is younger quarterback once you drop the ball miss a couple plays he's not going to come back to you because he's young a veteran quarterback would make sure like yo coach give me a slant or something easy I can just give him the ball get him a feel for it that's stuff that'll progress down the line uh, Goddard had a couple of big plays. Miles Sanders, who did not play in the preseason or training camp practices, looks healthy and fresh. He got his first touchdown in two years. And that's such a, a big non-factor because the way the Eagles play, Sanders would get you 75 yards down the field to the five-yard line, and they'd take him out and put Boston Scott or whoever else in to get a touchdown, which is what semi-happened in this game. But Miles did get his touchdown. All the running backs got a touchdown, and Hurts ran in a touchdown. Oh, we, we didn't pass for a touchdown. Well, when you're getting down to the five and the four, I don't know if you watched the Super Bowl uh, where the Seattle Seahawks should have ran the ball, but they passed it and had a pick. Sometimes you just run the ball, and heaven forbid, if you get in on second or third down, you don't need to try a pass because you're running the ball efficiently. And not for nothing, the team is built way better to run block because, again, jailbreak blitzing on this guy we could not pass protect very well for him now again I, when i say that and i'm listening to myself in real time i know exactly how i sound i'm making an excuse for jalen hurts no i'm not 
it's just what happened in this game. He still needs to progress and become a better thrower. We understand that. But in this instance, first game, jailbreak, it is what it is. I'm not having a problem with the offense. I think it's very vanilla. I feel like it's very college but at the same time, when you're getting blitzed like that, I don't really know what they planned on having or whatnot. I mean, a little bit too many RPOs for me, but it is what it is because of his style of play, and we do run the ball a lot, so it, it works on play action. I get it. So hopefully the offense evolves when the offensive line gels together a little bit and gets on their roll, which is probably going to take, again, two to three weeks for them to really solidify. Um, but the defense... The defense is a problem. New toys. Uh, Barrett is out. Oh, not Barrett. Barnett is out. Uh, torn ACL. Not a huge loss, but kind of a loss because we're a rotational front line. And even when he was in, we got zero pressure on Jared Goff and the Lions. And the Lions had three non-starters on the offensive line. Now, they've done a lot to bolster up their offensive line because that was a problem for them last year. But I don't care. Uh, I watch Hard Knocks, which means I watched some of the preseason games, and I wasn't that impressed with the people that were in there anyway. But we got no pressure. Um, uh, like one sack late, Cox got to do his sniper crawl. I think Cox is cooked. Um, I think he's done. But, again, rotational player now, worth $14 million a year. It is what it is. Thank you for your service. <laughs> um, but the defense is not going to be good. It's going to be the exact same even with all the new toys, we have so much more personnel and names and things that just in the off season, how he gave us that made me happy and made me believe just from personnel alone, because the Gannon way seems to be bend, but don't break, but Oh wait, we're breaking. Oh no, stop bending. Oh no. Uh, it's just bad. And so I have a lot of problems with the defense because of the coach. And this year, the head coach just went on. Now, he's done a lot better. Uh, Nick Sirianni has done so much better in interviews and things like that. I don't know if he had a training camp this offseason, but he's done much better. But he still goes back to stumbling and bumbling when they ask very specific questions that he has no answer for. The question that they asked him was, well, you know, did you talk to Gannon about the defense during the game? And he said, I'm not an expert on defense. You know, I talk to him about situational things, and I don't understand. My general question is, again, I'm not an NFL player. I'm not a coach. I'm just saying I've I've coached other things with kids and things like that on a small scale. But when you prepare, if you're an offensive guy and you have offensive plays and offensive schemes and offensive uh, uh, systems that you like to run, you have to study a defense to figure out what beats what. This, this play will beat a cover two, which in my mind would mean that you would have to know something about defense because you're trying to beat defenses. So when this man says, I don't really know about defense like that, I'm like, well, you gave up play calling so that you could surveil the whole team, offense and defense, and go talk to players. And yeah, you're on the sideline with the camera talking to the defense. Talking to them about what? If you're not an expert, why are you talking to them then? You, you might be messing them up, but as an offensive-minded guy, I've never understood how people do this. Oh, I'm a defensive head coach. I, I'm a defensive coach. Now I'm the head coach. I just worry about the defense. I got offense. But you should know about offenses. You're a defensive guy. All you do is film, tape, and study. You should know what beats what. How do you not know? How do you not know? And as the head coach who gave a play call and is going to surveil the whole team, you better figure it out. And I know this sounds like your buddy. He's a young gunner. He got interviews. I don't know why he got interviews, but I don't like him. I don't think he's good. I don't think he's going to serve us going forward in the future, and that's what I'm worried about. But, again, we got a W. Jalen Hurst was running too much, 14 runs, not the 17, because victory kneel downs don't count to me. I'm just going by the actual thing that happened. At the same time, he's a quarterback that slides. He's smart in the pocket, and – he wasn't running first in this game. He was running out of necessity to survive in this game. Uh, we won. I'm happy about it. Go Birds. Any victory is a good victory, especially because everybody knows just because you say they're the Lions, they're improved. They're doing better. And anybody can lose on any given Sunday. But this Sunday, we won. And that's my thought on the Birds starting off. Now, the rest of the division, let me get to them real quick. Oh, man. 
The Cowboys are trash and they are they're screwed. Uh, Jerry left early because he was upset because they went 19 and three. Uh, defense looked great, I guess. They only uh, let the goat get 19 points. It was a field goal uh, centric affair for Brady. You know he was upset, but the offense only put up three points. And then Dak went down with a broken finger. He is now turning into a paper bag man. Like the ankle, the hip, the back, the knee, the shoulder, the whatever you want to do, all the things he's had issues with. And now his finger is going to need a plate and a screw in it. And I don't know if he's going to be the same. I would just tank the season and go get another quarterback and flip and dip him. And if you're worried about the money, I don't know. The Eagles did it and they survived. But I don't care. You're the Cowboys. Zeke is cooked. He's trash. Jason Peters on the sideline kind of made me sick. And he looked sad, too. He's like, oh, I got to play with this. This is what I'm expected to do. Like, so Cowboys are done. Um, they, they can try and hold on. And, uh, you know, Cooper Rush, I guess his name is. Yeah, he had a couple good games last year. But guess what? They had Amari Cooper. They had, they had weapons. All the weapons that Jerry gave away for culture, it makes no sense. Anyway, Cowboys suck. Uh, and that's just not because I hate them, but it's just because they suck. They lost. And the Bucks looked okay, I guess. I don't know. I don't like Tom Brady. I'm, I'm a hater. Just call me what you want. The Giants won. <laughs> Man, messed up my parlay. Giants snuck in there and got a win 21-20. Good for you. Saquon is finally Saquon. Saquon Barkley is the reason I don't play fantasy football anymore. Uh, the last two years I played, I got Christian McCaffrey. He got hurt the first game, didn't play the whole season. The next season, I got Saquon Barkley. He got hurt the first game, didn't play. I'm like, I'm just out. Like, until somebody has a system where it's running back by committee, like it is for defense, then I'll play fantasy football. I want to just get, I want to get the Eagles running uh, uh, backs, running team, so I can get the quarterback, three running backs, and run. I want team rushing is what I want because going forward, running backs are just like a dead society and it just kills you and i it's token taking my heart away for fantasy football but again uh the giants won a uh, whoop de do Tannehill looked all right two tds no interceptions and jones looked like jones two tds one interception 168 but saquon was the big deal 164 yards good for him uh giants suck the commanders and the jags it was the ice cream bowl so uh if you don't know Doug Peterson, uh, again, thank you for your service in the Super Bowl. He always likes to give out ice cream, so he got to see uh, Carson pregame, and I'm sure he gave him an ice cream voucher. Uh, Carson came out and did what Carson does when he does well, uh, four TDs, but two picks because Carson giveth and Carson taketh away. Um, Trevor Lawrence looked okay. It was a close game till late, and uh, you know, but they're the Jags, and they're the Commanders. We're going to see them soon. Uh, they got a lot of weapons on offense, though. They got a lot of receivers. Um, their receiving core looks really nice, and they've got a lot of young players on defense. But, it's, again, um, you you only beat the Jags by six, so there's only so much I can say about that. Um, the rest of the games, just going through real quick, some of them I did see, and I didn't obviously watch the Buffalo uh Rams game. Buffalo looks so good. But nobody's talking about nobody's talking about their quarterback running too much. And this dude runs like he's running through the wall like the Kool-Aid man. Like, bro, you're up like 15, 17 points. Stops running or slide. He, he can't slide. I don't know if you think he knows how to slide. He's like Captain Caveman out there just running with the ball, scoring touchdowns, punching through people's face, stiff arming people. Yes, it was glorious. Yes, it was amazing. Apparently the Buffalo Bills are gonna win the Super Bowl this year. I believe it when I see it. Uh, nobody circles the wagons, whatever cliche you want to put in there. Uh, but the Rams had the Super Bowl hangover, and Von Miller just told the Bills everything that they were going to do, and they were in the backfield instantly. And I don't think that the Rams are going to look like that the rest of the year, but they do also need to figure out uh, how to get their running game going. Oh, Ramsey got smoked! Now, <laughs> I'm a fan of Ramsey. I'm a defender of Ramsey. And <laughs> stats the way they work out. The last six games or the last whatever, he's been getting toasted. But the, historically, that man shuts it down. But he got roasted on Thursday night opening game. My goodness. I, and I, lo I love you, Ramsey. I love you, Revado. I love the way you talk. It's hard to have all superstar cornerbacks left in the league right now. But you, my friend, I, I, man, whoo, you got toasted. Uh, <laughs> and I saw there was a tweet out there with burnt toast and him on there. Miami, 
And New England. Oh, again, I told you I hate Tom Brady. I hate the New England Patriots as a whole. And nothing makes me happier than to watch them be beat down by the Dolphins. And the rest of the division is going to crush them. It was uh, 20 to 7. Uh, Tariq Hill is Tariq Hill. He's still fast. He looks good. They're speedy. The defense ate and feasted on Mac Jones. He hurt his back, but it's not bad. He'll be okay. And uh, Bill Belichick should retire. I'm just telling you. Right now, unless he trades for a great quarterback and gives up the house to get somebody, he should retire because the rest of his career is going to do nothing but add else to his legacy. He is no longer being able to feast on a bad division. The division has gotten better around him, and he has gotten worse. He could never build an offense or get uh, Brady help. Brady just made do with scrap pieces of stew, and a good defense always helped him out. But now the defense can't help out a young, struggling quarterback because it's just not the bounce that there is supposed to be there. So he should retire. They're trash pandas. Love to see it. Great day in Alonzo morning. Uh, Baltimore, <laughs> the Jets. The Jets are always going to be the Jets. Salah out here talking about I'm keeping receipts. Receipts for what? You can't return nothing. You are a Jet, okay? You are a Jet. And, and blaming it on your quarterback, where's the defense at? A lot of teams don't have Joe Montagna on their team and got hurt. Or, you know what I mean? Like, shoot, you don't even have a Kirk Cousins. Like, you should just trade and get a Kirk Cousins. Like, you're blaming not having Wilson. Wilson sucks. He's still young. He sucks. You can have all the hope and hype and dream of him jumping up in the next level all you want to. The last nine quarterbacks you drafted, number one overall, number two overall, are all trash. Wilson will be trash. His mom and all the uh, old lady pimping they be doing over there will make sure of it. Shut up and play football and get that defense together because you let Baltimore Ravens throw on you. Now, again, <laughs> shout out to Lamar Jackson, exciting electric. I love him. He's great. But you, <laughs> you are worried about the wrong thing. You let the Baltimore Ravens throw the ball on you. So I don't want to hear it. I don't even know. How, let me see how many passing yards he had. I don't remember exactly how many yards he had. 213, three touchdowns, one INT. And Joe Flacco gave you 307 yards. So shut up. Your, your defense is trash. Get the defense together, Sal. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Oh, man. First of all, we got to get rid of ties. Uh, so many missed field goals. Uh, again, Burrow got rocked by the Steelers. The Steelers were on him. Five turnovers. You know, uh, the line doesn't look improved. But again, it's the first couple weeks. Everybody's got to get in shape. Hopefully, they have made uh, uh, adjustments on the line. So hopefully, it does work out for Bro. I guess I like the Bengals. I like their swag. I like their style. But I, I love Pittsburgh because I love Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin is my favorite head coach, maybe of all time. I just love his attitude. I love the way he talks. I love the way he coaches. I love the fact that he's never had a losing season. He's a winner, and uh, they squeeze that one out. Uh, yeah, 23-20 in overtime. Uh, but it was just that was just a wild game to watch because it was just bashing each other over the head with hammers. Just, just a crazy game. Um, speaking of ties that I hate, Indianapolis and Houston, that was a trash panda game. Uh, Indianapolis had multiple opportunities to win. Uh, the kicker's got space goggles on. He basically needs to put binoculars on his face because he's just missing. And he just looks like, you know, the, the nerd dude with the goggles, and it's funny. But, you know, when he makes kicks, everybody loves that he looks like a librarian. When he misses, it's like, you know, get the bifocals out. Um, but, you know, Lovey Smith, oh, man. Anyway, the Texans oh, tie. Why did they tie? Indianapolis should have won that game. Um, San Francisco and uh, the Bears. The Bears got the George W. It was a monsoon. Two young quarterbacks. One quarterback had a lot of excuses. The other quarterback looked okay in the rain and dealing with that situation. Take from it what you will. Uh, San Francisco still has Garoppolo on the back burner. And even though they're saying all the right things, I, I feel like Garoppolo is going to come in in week like five or six. But at the same time, you kind of can't do it because you gave up too much draft capital for Lance. And so you might have to just ride it out and suffer with whatever you get from that because that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, what else? What are the games we got? The uh, Saints. Man, there's not one. Mariota looked good. I was watching that game. Uh, Mariota looked so good. And I, I don't know what it is. I don't know why because I think because Chip Kelly was our 
coach at the time, and so I, I watched a lot of Mariota because we thought we were going to get him and all that kind of stuff. And I liked him. I liked his personality. And uh, he, he turned out to be average to not great. But he looked really great on, in the first half for the Falcons, and they were hyped, and it was amazing. And then reality set in, and they lost the game. <laughs> like They lost the game. It was like 40 seconds left in the game, and they lost. And Jameis Winston is one of the – he he takes comebacks personally. Now, he's never going to be known as, like, Captain Clutch, but he's he's built a resume of coming back in games. He he took that NCAA uh, uh, monitor for um, momentum. He's got that built and tattooed on his heart because when he gets momentum, he gets rolling, boy, he looks all world and un, unstoppable. Like, I don't know. He just walks down the field sometimes. You're like, oh wow, that's a that, that guy's good. And I'm like, well, it's still Jameis Winston, but he he did get his LASIK, and so he looked like he, he was on and popping. So that was great for them. They came back and they won the Saints, I guess, like that. I don't know. Uh, what other games did I miss? Uh, <laughs> Baker Mayfield. So I root for Baker Mayfield because I don't like what the Browns have done in general, the moves that they made, and just. The Browns organization in general, uh, I kind of liked them when Maker, Baker Mayfield was there, but they were mediocre, and I get it, but I just don't like the way they do business, so I was, like, rooting for him. The refs screwed the Panthers out of winning that game, but at the same time, your emotions get the best of you, and then that's what happens. You you lose that game. It's a closed game, uh, you know, but the Panthers are going to be a little bit better. The, the Browns look like they're going to be able to survive until – their quarterback comes back, Watson. But I don't even know if Watson's going to be any good. I feel like Watson's going to be trash. I feel like, you know, he's been away from the game too long, and the pressure that comes with that, I don't know. I don't really believe in Watson until I see it. You know, they believe in him because they gave him that guaranteed money. And uh, I think that's it. Did I get ahead of all the games that I saw? Oh, no, I did not. No, I did not. The – Raiders and the Chargers are basically neck and neck for equality. Uh, Justin Herbert is phenomenal. He's the next young phenom. Like, if you wanted to draft a quarterback, that's the one I'd want, I guess. That's the one everybody would want uh, if you had to draft someone that was, like, young. Uh, of course, you'd always want Patrick Mahomes. But uh, that was that was a good game. Uh, I did watch some of that in replay. The Raiders not only have the best stadium because it's the new spaceship – but they got AK cameras everywhere. I mean, every hallway, every corner. It almost looks like Madden when you're watching it. Uh, it it's just so impressive. Got to go to a game out there. I missed the Birds game out there last year. But it, it's just so impressive to watch on TV. It just looks – but, you know, everybody's got a nice 4K TV. Watch a Raiders home game. Your TV will instantly improve by 50% because of the cameras they're using. It'll make you feel like you're right there. It'll almost make it feel like a simulation. It's impressive. It's amazing. Uh, the Chargers won though twenty four nineteen. Uh, the <laughs> the Cardinals. Oh, okay. Now here's the thing about the Cardinals. They give their quarterback all this money, and they tell him that you have to read on the weekends <laughs> to keep your money. He was like eight and zero. Oh, no, Hopkins went down, and then he was like one and seven. So I understand fully that he needs probably the number one receiver in the league when he's playing to be good. But he looked like trash. You got $184 million, and you went out there, and you looked like trash. You looked ill-prepared. I know it's the Chiefs, but the Chiefs' defense is not some kind of juggernaut that they should hold you down like that. Uh, so good luck to you because Hopkins ain't walked through that door for, like, I think another seven weeks he's suspended. So he's going to keep looking like trash until Hopkins comes in no matter what. I mean, they might win a couple games, but he's not going to look good at all. The Chiefs, oh, no, Tariq Hill, what are they going to do? You don't know, like I know personally, Andy Reid – is going to Andy Reid it. He went and did the West Coast thing. Now, he Andy Reid is a, is a he's one of the greatest coaches ever. His offense is just legendary. He he's worked magic with nothing. So when he has something, it's really magical. And he's got something in Patrick Mahomes. And basically, he went back to the West Coast offense. Spread, dink and dunk, play action down the field, make plays and it just worked. 44 points most scored by any team uh, in the first week, and it wasn't surprising at all. It looked just like vintage Eagles that I watched with Donovan McNabb, but obviously Patrick Mahomes is better than Donovan McNabb at, at this stage already. He's just better than peak McNabb. So 
the Chiefs are the Chiefs, and you better watch out because they're going to be flinging and slinging all over the field. You've got to cover everybody now. You can't go do the Patriots way or whatever and then lock down Tyreek Hill and think you're going to shut the whole thing down. No. You got now Kels, everybody's open. <laughs> everybody's getting the ball. And it seems like Andy's going back and dedicating a little bit more to the run, too, this year. So look out for the Chiefs. They're not going anywhere. The Packers, oh, my God, the, the, the wide receiver's a rookie. He dropped that ball. We, we had mental mistakes. Shut up, Aaron Rodgers. You didn't want to do training camp. You didn't want to do uh, practices. Guess what? He didn't get the reps with you. He don't know how you th- laying that ball in the bread basket. He's nervous. He's nervous. He got to worry about stuff. My fault. He's worried about things. He's got things on his mind, so you got him stressed out. He dropped that ball, and it was one play. But it was the beginning of the game, and it was going to be a walkaway touchdown, and it just took the air out of the room for the Packers. The Vikings looked really good, and I don't know if it's real or not. You know, they got a young, co- uh, young coach uh, off the McVay tree, and it looked like McVay's offense, just everybody motioning, everybody moving. Je- Jefferson looked like Superman out there. 168 yards, I think, in the first half. They could not cover him. They didn't want to cover him. I'm like, man, you look like the Black Cooper Cup. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you, you're just letting this dude run wild on you and just open, open, open. And again, uh, he's off the McVay tree, so it looked very familiar to me because I watched a lot of Rams games. And uh, I, I just don't know whether to believe it or not. We're going to find out because the birds are playing them next week on Monday Night Football. But uh, the Packers are in trouble. I don't know if he's going to be able to say relax this year. I don't know if he's going to be able to be like, relax. Now, he's Aaron Rodgers. He's a bad man. You know, maybe after a couple weeks, again, I said the first three weeks are like preseason. They might get on a roll. We'll see. But the division looks like they're trying to get their selves together, and that's going to be a problem for them. Um, And the last game, (laughs) just the Seahawks and the Broncos. Shout out to the NFL. They did a really good job in scheduling this year. They've got a lot of rivalry games and back to life and back to the future, coming home games and things like that. And this is the major one of the offseason because of the Seahawks and the Broncos and Russell Wilson. And, again, a young coach and a veteran QB in the Broncos and the Broncos – lost that game on the dumbest mistakes like if you're watching the uh the Peyton press uh, silent him and Shannon Sharp and Eli were on at the end of the game and they were all just like why aren't you calling a timeout call a timeout you need to call a timeout right now and it was just like you, you could see that uh Peyton and uh Shannon Sharp were just hurting inside Eli was laughing because he's like what are they doing this is dumb which is always interesting when you see a dummy like Eli say somebody else is dumb. And uh, it was just crazy how they lost that game in Seattle. Geno Smith out there looking like DJ Khaled. God did. Nobody believed in me. But God did. (laughs) He went out there and he got that W against the Broncos, which on paper is such a much better team. But they have a a coach that is a veteran in this league. I kind of like Carol, too. And uh, he did not say hi. Everybody else said hi to Wilson. He did not say hi to Wilson. And he's on the record saying, I like beating players that used to play for me, and I know how to beat them. And he came out and showed that they knew how to beat Russell. Russell was doing a flip and dip, reverse uh, scramble to the right and left, and they were ready for it on defense. They played their Super Bowl. You know, the, the crowd was rocking. The stadium was loud as it's ever been. And, uh they lost that game. The Broncos lost that game. It was only one point. I don't care. You lost that game. Uh, Russell, whoo, that was embarrassing. That was bad for him. But Russell's a happy-go-lucky guy. You know, he's a cheese ball, and he's going to, you know, Bronco Nation it up, and everybody's going to rah-rah, sis boom ba. Uh, you know, but n- nobody knows how to beat you like your mom does at home because she, <laughs> she knows how to whoop that button. That's what happened to them. They lost that game, and uh, that's the end of the First week of NFL football. It was a great week. I'm um, looking forward to everything coming forward. And, uh, yeah, just exciting. Um, so just a message real quick on the birds against the Vikings. The defense is going to have to – we're going to find out about the defense this week because they're, the lines are – 
you know, as much as you want to, some people were picking the Lions. Some people thought that the Lions were going to whatever. Because, again, I watch Hard Knocks. You know, it gets in your heart a little bit. You think something special is going to happen. And sometimes it does. And, you know, best of luck to the Lions because I love their coaching staff. I actually did enjoy Hard Knocks. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it makes you feel for the players. I'm not so much a Campbell guy as I am the rest of the coaching staff because they got a lot of former players. And I like their attitude and their mindset. Deuce Staley's on that team. Uh, and I always wish that he would have been a coach for the Eagles. So, uh, you know, good luck to them going forward because I don't have to worry about them anymore. And hopefully they beat up on Rodgers every once in a blue. But uh, as far as the Eagles are concerned, the Vikings are a legit offense. They have weapons. And if we go out there and get embarrassed, I know it's only week two. But Gannon's got to be on the hot seat for getting fired. Like, I mean, like, I want him gone already. I don't know. I want a veteran defensive coach coordinator here i just i want a vet here and i i want them now because i feel like we've got all the tools but we don't have a mechanic and this guy has got some you know crap certification that he knows how to coach and how to put things together and i haven't seen it and now that he's got all the weapons i don't see any difference i see the exact same system in place and i don't like it and we're going to see exactly what he's made of in this monday night game and the whole Country's going to see Oh, man, the whole country's going to see it, too. So go ahead and mess around and get embarrassed on Monday Night Football. Please fire this man. Please fire this man. Um, but we're going to see what happens. Uh, Phil's, we're still trying to just sneak it in some baseball real quick. Still trying to make the playoffs. Let's just get in there and get some October baseball for us, at least in the wild card. You know, they had a little bit of a slump uh, when Bryce came back. But uh, hopefully we, we keep the ball rolling in the right direction, get healthy, and uh, get, get a little hot streak going into the playoffs and make something happen because it'll be the first time in 11 years. So I, I, I need it. I want it. Uh, Basketball is coming up and uh, hockey's coming up. So for at least for hockey, I'll have dreams of Ganger in the beginning of the season. We'll see how that works out. And the Sixers are the Sixers. I'll do a whole episode on that another day soon. I'm your boy, Black Gritty. It's uh, season two, Gritty Nights. Uh, follow on all the socials and the things and the links. And uh, I'm out. <laughs>